This video will demonstrate vessel mapping for dialysis access. Important ultrasound controls include the gain here, controlled like a volume button, depth for up and down, generally two and a half to three centimeters, and that we're able to use caliper to measure vessels. Some machines require you to freeze. This machine just using the caliper button alone makes it freeze. To go back to a live image, we can hit the freeze button or 2D. It's important that the patient is in a comfortable position. Start with a visual inspection for scars or obvious veins. Pulse examination for the radial and ulnar arteries is important and brachial artery as well. A tourniquet is imperative for good venous distension Snug, but not too tight. Gels required. Generally, you don't need a lot of jelly, but you need to spread that over the areas that you plan to visualize. Orientation of the probe is critical. You can see here I'm touching the right, but it shows up on the left side of the screen. Really want to touch the right and see it on the right like it is in this portion. It's really important not to get disoriented during your scanning. Generally, painting the arm with a thin layer of gel can help with good visualization and prevent use of excess gel. An initial inspection of the brachial vessels at the antecubital fossa can show that there's a single dominant brachial artery in this case and two vena comitantes. It's common that there's not a single deep brachial vein at this level. Next, we'll come over and look at the median cephalic vein and sweep into the upper arm, doing spot compressions as we go up the arm. You can notice that the cephalic vein is in a fascial envelope, similar to the saphenous vein in the leg. It's important that you use light pressure and not compress the vein too much. It's important to take a measurement at the area where the surgical anastomosis will be created. Next, we'll look at the anacubital area and the interplay between the median cephalic, median cubital, and perforator veins that we can see in this part of the image. Next, we'll follow the forearm cephalic vein down through the forearm and do compression along the way. Note again that the probe is not fully opposed on the arm and we see the black streak on the left side of the ultrasound screen. This is again to prevent putting too much pressure on the vessels and causing collapse. This is perfectly acceptable as long as we can see the vessel that we intend to visualize. Here on this machine, we're using the caliper button, then moving the calipers, hitting select to move the other caliper, and then 2D to re-engage the imaging. Now we're looking at the radial artery, noting this is nice, compressible, and pulsatile. Measurement can be done here as well. Standing mapping criteria would require that this be a two millimeter vessel. The bottom left of the screen shows 0.22 centimeters. And next we're gonna go and look for the upper arm basilic. The gels dried out, so we'll reapply a small amount and repaint the arm. Because we've lifted off the probe, we wanna make sure we reorient so we don't get confused with further imaging. We'll come just above the elbow and see the brachial vessels and then sweep over for the basilic vessels. Here we see the forearm basilic vein and median cubital vein coming together as we sweep back and forth across this area. Small nerves are seen around the basilic vein in this area. Those are branches of the medial antibrachycutaneous nerve. And now we see the median cubital vein down below the elbow that leads up to the basilic vein. More challenging just to visualize the forearm basilic vein. So we'll sweep around, find the basilic confluence, and then follow that down the back side of the arm. Important for imaging the forearm basilic vein is rotating the probe around the forearm and being careful not to compress the vein. 
This really cannot be imaged from the front side of the forearm as you can see where the ultrasound is located now. And that completes the ultrasound examination.